Okay. I'm very excited and very I'm very happy and I'm honored to be able to share with you my experience with Dr. Suk so that you can come to know more about Dr. Junho Suk who founded uh, Tongiri Mudo in 1979. So I would like to focus on seven tenets of Tongiri Mudo. So first is I pledge to make, I pledge to be loyal and filial to my parents. Number two, I pledge to be loyal to my country. Number three, I pledge to love and care for my brothers and sisters. Number four, I pledge to make sincere efforts to achieve unity between mind and body. Number five, I pledge to overcome every difficulty by perseverance. Number six, I pledge to be bold and courageous for the cause of righteousness. Number seven, I pledge to fight against injustice with an indomitable spirit. So Dr. Suk, before he came to a Unification Theological Seminary, so-called UTS, he was teaching martial arts, basically Taekwondo and Judo in Virginia, in USA. And he was studying to receive the PhD. Yeah. So when he was called by Dr. Samuel Moon to become the vice president of UTS, and he never thought about teaching the martial arts again. So when Dr. Moon called Dr. Silk and asked him to teach martial arts, he was very shocked. And then he obeyed Dr. Moon. And he, Dr. Moon asked Dr. Silk, please start teaching martial arts based upon divine principles. So he spent a long time in meditation and prayer, and he received so much inspiration and revelation. And he started Tongil Mudo, centered upon divine principle in 1979. As a student, as his students, myself, uh, I'm, I was very fortunate to attend his uh, class. But before he start teach Tongi Mudo, he was teaching unificationism in the lecture room. Then after that, we down to the dojo immediately and we practiced Tongi Mudo. So Dr. Suk was teaching the fo falling at the beginning, because it is very important for us to learn Tongiri Mudo, especially falling, because we may experience in our lifetime falling down, and if we don't know how to do falling, then you may be, you may get injury. So doctors was very serious to teach the falling techniques. And then when he was teaching the punching, kicking, striking, blocking, these basic techniques, when he, whenever he executes these techniques, he makes sound. For example, when he punched, make big sound. And also he executes beautiful side kick, he makes sound. And we are very fascinated by his techniques. And all the techniques were so precise. So many students, not only brothers, many sisters were attracted to Dr. Sui. He was like a hero in UTS. So we had uh, many, many students. OK, so he was a hero in UTS. So he was very strict in the training. Sometimes he keep us, uh, kick. he uh, kept us punching, kicking, especially kicking more than 100 times. Just keep kicking, 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 no stop. 
So something he pushed us to the limitation. So he was very strict. Then when we were so exhausted, he stopped. And he started to teach about why we practice Tongyem Budo. What is the meaning of Tongyem Budo? What is the meaning of each form? Like a Sawide Weibon. So he explained about four position foundation. So he giving us the, the, the lecture of the divine principle. And he was nourished. We, we were nourished by him. So physically we trained by him, but also spiritually. We received so much benefit. And Dr. Suk, even though he was strict in the training, but after we finished the training, he was so warm. He embraced the students. I remember several times he called me in his office and he repeated me, you have to pay attention to each of the students. You have to care each student. And then in terms of techniques, he asked me to show some techniques. For example, not the garden block, or chum. He called me, he corrected many times. Oh, your hand is not like this, should be here. No, more higher. So precise. Each technique he corrected me so that when I teach Tongiri Mudo UTS, when doctors cannot teach, then I can teach properly to my student. So, and also, we had the Tongi Mudo manual, explanation of what, all the detail, each techniques of each form. So we made up this manual, so Dr. Suk said, you have to memorize everything. When you teach, you teach exactly following the manual. <laughs> so this is the standard which he expected. So the Tongi Mudo instructor, we have to really teach properly, precisely, exactly, based upon the manual, which he made. So that is the Dr. Suk's expectation to each of Tongi Mudo black belt. So, Dr. Suk, every, uh, almost every Sunday, he went to youth, uh, Belveria. He attended Dr. Moon's Sunday service, and he received uh, his message, he wrote down on his note. And during, during morning service in the chapel in UTS, he shared with us what Dr. Moon spoke during Sunday service. So he was always delivering Dr. Moon's message, not only Tongi Mudo students, but all the students of UTS. He was so close to Dr. Moon. So throughout my Tongi Mudo life, what I learned most from Dr. Suk is his attendance to true parents. Dr. Mrs. Moon, and also through children. Okay. Then that's true parents. Then through that's children. Through children. Okay, start again. Action. So that we have to learn from Dr. Suk. Mm. So our loyalty and piety to true parents are most important in our Tongi Mudo training as the tradition. So we have to teach this to our students. Then Tongi Mudo never perish. So Dr. Suk was asked by Dr. Moon through father to become the president of a cup. I think that was 1982. <laughs> so detailed. Okay, lay. So Dr. Suk, he lost 20 pounds in UTS. He
he was very heavy, big when he started teaching Tongil Budo. But he, ha he was a vice president, also he was in charge of the accountant. So many pressures and so he really invests so much. And he started to lose weight. When he was called by true father to go to a camp as a prison, he was not sure if he can do it because physically. But he determined, commit himself, even sacrifice his life as a prison of a camp. Before he left UTS, he spoke to Dr. Moon, true father, that after I left UTS, and then Master Takami Hoshiko will continue teaching Tongi Mudo. Then true father approved. Okay. So true father was very serious, serious about Tongi Mudo training in UTS. We have to continue. Even Dr. Moon, Dr. Suk leave UTS. We cannot stop. So that's why I became Tongyuri instructor in UTS. But before that, 1980, I was attending promotion test and I was, uh, I was doing free sparring. My partner was East Garden Security, very tall, maybe 190 centimeters, maybe. And I was free sparring and my guard became very low and I received that strong kick to my nose. So I, my nose was broken and I have a black eyes. So I went to the hospital and get surgery. So that time, my class, class 1980, they graduated. But because I got injury, I had to stay in UTS by myself to recuperate. That was 1980, June, July. Then Dr. Moon asked all the unification members in America to go out, even foreign countries, to do pioneering for 40 days. So you have only one-way ticket. Then after you get there, you have to survive. You have to raise money. You have to find a place to live. And you have to witness. So I was recuperating, right? Then Dr. Mo asked all the members, you have to go out. And I was wondering, what shall I do? And Dr. Sun told me, you have to go to some cop center. Because that time, all the UT students, after they graduated, they went to cop. So that's why Dr. Su suggested, why don't you go to cop and you stay there and you have to recuperate yourself. And then, yes, Dr. Su, but I want to pray. I want to think about. So I was taking a walk in a trail in UTS meditating, praying. Still, I don't know what to do. Shall I go to cup center to recovery? Or shall I go to 40 days pioneering? Then I opened up Dr. Moon's message, the way of God's will. And I found a message which said, if you want to understand God's heart, you have to go through painful course difficult of course and I received the answer that's it okay so I have to go out for 40 days even though I got the injury so I went to south of London, south of Boston the city called Randolph so before I left for Randolph to do pioneering doctors gave me wonderful wisdom how to survive because he concerned about my health so okay doctor sir then i went there i started 40 days so first day we have to do fasting so i couldn't eat anything i have no place to sleep 
So I was lying down on the bench in front of the shopping center. And they are closing already, getting late. And I was lying down on the bench and they called police. And police car came and searching for me, some strange guy lying down on the bench. So I have to escape because otherwise I cannot continue violin. That's the first day. So I hide myself under the, you know, some trees and glasses. So they are desperately searching for me. So I have to go to the behind the bank, building of the bank. I keep standing, I stay whole night. No sleep. Then next morning I went to the Boston Cup and I got some flowers and some, yeah. Then I borrowed that and I went back to the Randolph. I start to sell these flowers uh, near the traffic light. Fasting, right? No eating. So you have to sell the rose, flowers, when car stop. So I don't know how come the people know that I'm fasting. One lady came. Oh, you must be thirsty. She brought cold water. And I received the water. <laughs> and I kept selling the flowers. And I got money. Then I pay back. Hmm? Then with this money, I went back to Randolph. I borrowed, I rented a very small room. That's what became my house. So I went out. Dr. Mu asked, you have to meet the chief police and you have to be, meet the mayor. So I followed Dr. Mu's instruction. So I start to visit chief police first. When I visit chief police, he was increased. I'm martial artist. I mentioned I'm a unification church missionary and I have a black belt, Togi Oh, really? So I asked him, do you, do you have a dojo? Do you train police? He said, yes, we used to have a dojo, but now we closed down. No more dojo now. So policemen didn't practice Tongi and martial arts for so long. Okay, I understand that. Then, I visited the mayor of that city. So we, we call the board of selectmen. Board of selectmen. So five people, they share the responsibility of mayor. We call board of selectmen. So I met one of them and I introduced myself as a missionary and also black belt. He was very interested. He asked me to come to the meeting. That day, they happened to have a meeting of the town. And I didn't know anything about the meeting. And so he brought me to the meeting room. He introduced me to other members of the Bodo Selectman, saying that he's a missionary and also he has a black belt. Then meeting started. And the beginning of the meeting, they offer prayer always. So they asked me to offer prayer. I didn't know anything. I just came and they asked me to offer prayer. So I offer prayer. And my prayer was very long. I mentioned about the Puritan, Pilgrim Father, who came to Primas Rock in Boston. They started. Hmm? And they have a vision to create God's nation, God's kingdom of heaven. So I mentioned in my prayer, then I finished my prayer. So they are very surprised. They never expected to hear such long prayer, passionate prayer. The meeting started. The, that meeting, they have to select new chief police. So there are some candidates, two or three candidates there. One of the candidates was the chief police whom I met. And they voted. The man whom I met, he became again chief police. And we shook hands with each other. We became very close. Later, we opened up dojan for policemen. Later. Yeah. They brought all the mat from the high school 
we set up the class. What year was that, Master? 1980. So policemen finally start to learn martial arts, Tongiri Mudo, and also Jujutsu. Because I visited YMCA, I became friends with Jujutsu instructor. And we work together, we continue to teach policemen. So I, after I met chief police and the mayor, I became very close to them. Well, it helped me to use Tongiri Mudo in my witnessing. Because they know I'm a Unification Church missionary. Everything. So I went to YMCA. When I went to YMCA, they don't know anything about Tongi Mudo. So I was just watching them. And this instructor, he's a black man, Oriba Dylan. He's a black man. He asked me, why don't you join the, our training? He was teaching also Jujutsu. So, okay. So I don't know anything, so I learned. The student, who, the, the teacher who taught me, he has a green belt. He's a boy, high school boy. So he was teaching me. Then some younger people who play basketball, they are on the second floor. They're looking at me. They're laughing at me. Who black belt learning from? Hmm? Yellow belt. Young guy. Who is this black belt? They're like laughing at me. Then I remember that. Dr. Sugu's words. When you learn any martial arts, you have to start from zero. You have to be humble. I remember that. Then I could persevere. I became very humble and I learned humbly. I just kept learning. Then one day, this Jiu-Jitsu instructor asked me, I want to ask you to teach kicking to my black belt candidate. So he came to recognize my ability. So I brought these young people upstairs. I kept teaching, kicking especially. So he was very grateful for me. So I start from zero. Then I became the instructor in my MCA. And he, he was a policeman. He was also, he has a gun. He's a chief, he's a, so he does both, mm -hmm. martial arts teaching and also police. So he took me to police station. There's a big room where they teach young people. So he asked me to show all the techniques Tongi Mudo. He videotaped like this. Every technique Tongi Mudo. So he wants to show to the young people. So everything I have to show him, <laughs> basic technique, form, and everything. So anyway, after I finished 40 days workshop, this man, Oliver Dillon, is a Jiu-Jitsu instructor. He went to Boston Cup Center. He studied Divine Principle. Yeah, I'm very happy. With the help of Mr. Eijiro or Kusakari, um, he helped me to teach him Divine Principle. So I continued teaching in YMCA, also, I have no money, right? So I used to visit the house and I was cleaning the, cutting the grass and I really want to serve the people before I witnessed. And some people gave me money, but still not enough. So I was hungry. Then I happened to visit Chinese restaurant. And I explained that I'm a Tongi, uh, black belt, Tongi Rumudo. But the manager was very interested in Tongiri Mudo, martial arts. He said, I want to learn martial arts. Do you know why? He had a bad experience. He was attacked by some gangster or some bad people. So he wanted to learn how to defend himself. And so he said, so how much shall we pay? Then I said, you don't need to pay anything. But there is one condition. I will come to a Chinese restaurant, so you have to feed me every day. So he said, what? Okay. 
He said yes. So I go there, I eat a lot of food. I never become hungry. So this came from Dr. Suk's wisdom. So Dr. Suk was praying for me, but also he gave me the wisdom. That's why I could survive. <laughs> so when I went to YMCA, I started to teach with this Jiu-Jitsu instructor, and I started to witness the younger people. I was teaching divine principle. And I was teaching one young man divine principle. But his father was also attending Jujutsu class. So I spoke to his father. I'm teaching your son. I'm a member of Unification Church. I'm teaching divine principle. Is that okay? He, no problem. Please teach. So I kept teaching to him divine principle. So before I left, we started, 40, uh, we started Tongi Mudo class in, for policemen. So they start to learn Tongi Mudo. Even I left this black man, Oliver Dillon, he continued to teach to the police, policemen. Mr. Oshigo, back to them. Do you have any background in martial arts before you... Yes. When I was a, a junior high student, I practiced judo. Judo. Then when I became university student, I practice boxing. Yeah. So that is my experience of martial arts. But actually, when Dr. Moon asked, for the wave communist, you have to defend yourself. If you become the, the minister, you have to take care of your members. If someone's attacked, then who will save who protect them? You have to do it. So Dr. Mu emphasized about self-defense and also unity between mind and body. Self-discipline. So that, that's the way uh, I could start to learn Tongil Mudo. So I came back from the 40 days pioneering. The, President of UTS asked me, please stay in UTS, don't go out. So I became Tongi Mudo instructor at the same time. I, of course, assistant as of Dr. Su, and also I was helping the security. So that was 1980. So then I became assistant instructors. Then sometimes Dr. Su cannot teach, so I was teaching. Many students. Then, uh, so Dr. Suku uh, really encouraged me to really take care for our members. The one day, Dr. Suku, after he was teaching, then after we finished the, the class, he took maybe eight, eight of us to a small room near a student lounge. And he started to share about the vision of Tongi Nubaba. So he was saying that we were going around whole America showing demonstration. And then we go out all over the world showing demonstration. Nobody believed it. That time we didn't have a, no foundation that time. So who could believe it? Then what happened? 1982, he was called by Dr. Moon to become the president of a cop. So first thing he did was, he started to tour in all America under the theme of unificationism and martial arts. So we started from Boston. In the winter time, wow, very cold. So we were in Dobok, we are distributing different on the street to bring many people and that was the first then so many people came to the gymnasium so we did the jumping fall and breaking and the, I, was, I was doing free sparring with the Tsumagari he was a former Kyokushinka black belt no pre-arrangement free sparring 
but we train and we control, so we really block, we fight, hit, but no problem. I was enjoying so much. Real wristband, full contact, but controlling, and, but also stimulating each other. This is a really amazing experience of wristbarring. During the demonstration, some of them, after that, join CUP. I think Mr. Shota Iwasaki, he's a content leader of the United States. He was the one who came to that uh, program, and he went to CUP, and he became the CUP member, and he started practicing Tongi Numudo. He became a content leader of the United States of America. So through that, we witnessed many younger people. And we went to also Houston, Texas. Amazing experience happened to me. So Houston, Texas, we performed demonstration, right? And Dr. Sku spoke. When we perform demonstration, our stage is this shape. You see, not square. So this kind of shape. So I was performing Chonson Weibo, form of Victory Heaven. So here, here this narrow, I, I start, I wanted to do jumping fall on this small narrow space to really hmm, inspire the audience. Hmm. So jumping fall in this narrow space. So before I even started this, uh, performance, one of the black belt, Daryl Clark, black brother, very strong. He received revelation from God. So he was sitting here, standing here first. He was asked by God, you have to move here. So here, from here to here, just beside this here. So he was standing. So why? He didn't know. So he was standing. So I was performing for form of hmm, Victory Heaven, and then I start to jump. Then I miss, I miss. So I supposed to land here, I miss. So I went down to the ground. Maybe one meter, 80 centimeter, concrete. So like this, I fell down. The all of a sudden, two strong arms came up and lifted me up, boom! So I went back to the stage. And I continued practice, I performed Form of Victory Heaven. And I finished. I was so shocked. What? Somebody, wow! So I landed here, my body here. He moved up, boom! So he told me after that. Master Hoshiko, I got the leverage from God. I have to move from here to here. He didn't know why. So I was there. Then I was standing, you fell down. So I pushed back. If he was not there, my head crashed on the concrete. So God saved my life through him. Then Dr. Suk intentionally chose the university where there were many communists. So one is the Berkeley, California. Very good university, many communists there. So we started talking about demonstration. And the communists, they don't like us. Of well, course, we believe in God. And doctors will speak about unificationism and martial arts. So that is based upon God-centered ideology. So Dr. Suk, watching our demonstration, the communists, so we set up the mat, communists start to come closer to the mat, and they try to stop our demonstration. So Master Takahashi and communists almost fist fight. And Dr. Suk came up, he hit our head, stop, don't fight. And we follow Dr. Suk's instruction. We continue performing demonstration. And when doctors are speaking, so much noise to disturb his message. But doctors never stop. 
and we finish, and we sang God Bless America. We continue, we never stop. So that is a victory. And after we finish, he went to shake hands with the communists. Bravery. Shake hand. Some communists rejected. No, 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 no. <laughs> but he approached the communists. But they cannot. He wants to embrace communists. Some of the communists became cup member after that. He was so inspired. Uh -huh. So he was taking photo with Dr. Su, you know. And Dr. said, he became Muni. This guy. Huh? So this kind of thing happened. Then next university, Madison, Wisconsin. Madison University. Very, very radical university. So we went there. So already when we started, the protest by communists, many hmm, communists making hmm, some group and they are protesting against us outside of the venue, making noise. Then we started. So we performed demonstration and Dr. Suk started to speak. So Daryl Clark, strong, this black guy, and another Michael Kellett, very strong, very powerful guy. They stood beside Dr. Su to protect Dr. Su, just in case somebody jump up to the stake and to harm Dr. Su. And one guy, one communist, he started to make noise. The immediate security came in, pulled him out. So we finished safely. So this was Madison, Wisconsin. So through this tour, Tongyu Mudo was introduced all America. So what he said became reality. Yeah. So we started many branches in Tongyu Mudo, especially university. Yeah. So Dr. Suk really educated many young people through Tongyu Mudo and unificationism. Then, so Dr. Suk. Uh, he, uh, afterwards, he uh, became the continental leader of Russia and China and Mongolia. So he produced many Tongyu Mudo members, Russia and also China and Mongolia. Because uh, these young people, they really like Dr. Sun. So my, uh, Mr. Kensak Takahashi, my senior uh, instructor, he went to also to Russia with Dr. Silk. Even before, true parents went to Moscow. Already we had the Tongi Mudo class, Lithuania. This is under the Russian regime that time. But already, Master Takahashi went there. And I think Dr. Suk went there. So before true parents went to Moscow, Russia, already Tongil Mudo went to Russia, made some foundation. So uh, Master Takahashi and Dan Harbor, Michael Kellett, they really work hard to make foundation in Russia, Europe, South, and Master Takashi also went to South America and Gustavo Giuliano. He was a Taekwondo champion in Argentina. He joined Tongi Mudo. So he became Tongi Mudo instructor. So we started Tongi Mudo in South America. Jerry Sabito, he also practiced Tongi Mudo UTS. He was sent by Dr. Suk to Philippines. And he sent me many times a letter and reporting what's happening in Philippines. And at the end of the letter, already he put Chung Hyo. So he has an amazing loyalty and filial piety to Dr. Su and myself. And he made an amazing foundation in Philippines. 
So many young people joined Tongil Mudo. And they started practice, they started learn divine principle. And then many members joined in Unification Church in Philippines and CARP. So most of the CARP leaders, uh, church leaders, have a black belt, Tongil Mudo. So Philippines is the example how to witness young people through Tongil Mudo. So Dr. Sugu sent Jerry Sabito to Philippines. He became first uh, Tongi Mudo uh, instructors. Also, Master Takahashi came and Steve Kani came. So they really helped. So Tongi Mudo is not just only technique, but also Master Jerry Sabito teach unificationism and divine principle. So those who want to get the black belt, they have to study divine principle. So that kind of tradition was set in Philippines. So doctors want us to follow this pattern in Philippines and apply it all other countries and produce many young people. So this is one of the successful examples. So Tongi Mudo spread, especially Philippines, many people. One time 5,000 5, members practiced in Tongi Mudo in Philippines around that time, 1984, 85, 86. And Steve Kearney was sent to Thailand. He was teaching Tongi Mudo. And also many members joined. And Pitaya. And Pitaya and Ya. And so Tongi Mudo spread all over the world. And some of the Philippines to went to Africa. Panfiro, uh, other instructors. So now, so my experience with Dr. Silk uh, reminds me, he never, he never compromised against evil, injustice. He challenged that, but he loves enemy. He embraced. And uh, he really demonstrated unity between mind and body. He showed us example. So even sometimes he doesn't sleep so much, but he always uh, give us energy and inspiration and vision. So, uh, doctors, we have to follow the standard of Dr. Suk. But Dr. Suk always remind us, Tongi Mudo spirit is true parent spirit. We have to follow true parents. So now Tongi Mudo spreading all over the world and making foundation and uh, now we are moving toward Olympic Games. So Dr. Su was asked by yesterday some uh, media, so do you want to go to Olympic? Of course, he said, with your help. Mm. So now we are making effort and really making good foundation so that we can go to Olympic Games. So that is Dr. Suk's great uh, vision. And whenever he gives us vision, he achieves that vision. So he is the man of the words. That's why I follow doc, uh, Dr. Suk. Many times he appeared in my dream. I cannot escape from Dr. Suk. Even physically, I'm not with Dr. Sir. He's now on the way to Korea, right? I'm here. But he appeared in my dream. Sometimes he scolded me very strongly. Sometimes he's smiling at me. And I realized why he scolded me in my dream. And I start to reflect myself. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, I have to repent. <laughs> I have to change myself. And when he was, sometimes he showed me smile in my dream, 
and I was so encouraged by him. Sometimes I'm down, right? I'm spiritually down, so he encouraged me through the dream. So I cannot escape from Dr. Su. Wherever I go, whatever I do. So he see everything, even here, he's watching me, all my actions. What I'm saying, maybe, hey, everything. So he, he go beyond time and space. So that is my relationship with Dr. Suk. I'm sure Dr. Suk did it with True Pian is more than that. So he's a very special person for me. And he also he loved not only myself, my wife. My, when my wife was conceived, the first child in Washington, D.C., Dr. Sun was happened to be around that area. So first person he came to the hospital was Dr. Sun. And my wife was lying down in the bed after she gave birth to the baby. He was sitting on the chair. He was praying. Yesterday, I witnessed Dr. Su. At the day before yesterday, when we had the preliminary tournament, when he entered the venue, he was sitting in the VIP chair. First thing he did was prayer. I saw. So he's a man of prayer. So he prayed for this victory of what? Mombasa Open Tournament, before, even before you came. So, he's a very special person. So I hope our relationship with the students become like that. So students always be encouraged by you, physically or spiritually. So you are really guide. So like you are like guiding them all their life. My dealings with Doctor Sug never finished for 40 years. I was in America, and I came back to Japan. I was a church leader. That time I was away from Tongi a short time, but uh, then I became Tongi Nudo instructor again. So for 40 years. Unification Church. My relationship with Dr. Suk never cut out. This is a very miracle. So when I became UTS students, I prayed to God. That was 1978. I was 28 years old. Maybe younger than you. And I was not sure after I graduated UTS, what should I do? So I prayed to God. I don't know what to do after I graduate. So it's up to you, heavenly parents. So you, 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 hmm? you show me. So you give me direction. So that's my prayer. That just before I graduate, I, as I said, I was kicked by other. Uh, black belt and my nose was broken so I got surgery and I have to recuperate so that's why I have to stay UTS by myself other UTS students went to COP after they graduate then I made up my plan for 21 years from 1980 to 2000 so I divide into seven years, three seven years course. Seven years. So this is my 21 years course since 1980. I made. Then my goal was I want to become Tongi Mudo international instructor. And I want to teach not only Tongi Mudo, but divine principle going around all over the world. That was my dream. That was my goal. For 21 years. Then I came back to Japan in 1993 and I became church leader. 
and I don't have time to teach because that was my mission given by God. Then, year 2001, all of a sudden, I was called by Dr. Suk, you have to go to the United States. You have to perform the demonstration in UTS. That time, Hyunjin was leading a 21 days work. So all of us, we getting old, but we went to perform the demonstration. And that was a new beginning of Tongi Mudo. So then uh, I came back, then I was uh, asked to go to CARP in Japan to teach Tongi Mudo. I became Tongi Mudo instructor again. Yeah. Then, so that was 2000, 2001. So, when it became 2020, uh, year 2000, that is the 21st year of Tongi Mudo. Uh, the, my goal, hmm? my plan. Then I was expecting, okay, year 2000, so now I can go out, I become Tongi instructors, you know? But this never happened. But next year, this happened. So 2001, I went to United States, performed demonstration, I came back, I became instructors in CARP. Then Dr. Su called us again, and we started going around from Philippines, and Kenya, and then Russia, and Mosk Mongol, and then came to Korea. We have a Tongi Mudo workshop. We start to spread Tongi Mudo all over the world. So now, after 21 years later, I became real Tongi Mudo international instructors. And my plan was realized. This became true, real, real. So I already made up this plan 21 years ago. So you know how God works. So Tongi Mudo is not just to martial arts. This is a God's given martial arts. This is God's providence. That's why I became Tongi Mudo instructor. So I want to encourage you to make big plan. 21 years plan. It will be realized. Because this happened to me. As far well as your goal is proper goal, this we realize. So now, so for 40 years, my first half of the experience is like this. Then I came to Tongi Mudo instructors, international instructors. I went to many, many countries to teach Tongi Mudo, but also Tongi Mudo philosophy. And also Dan Harbor, Vincent Belomonte, and, and also, who else? Uh, Philippine Venus Augustine, and uh, many Tongi international instructors went to different countries, and we made the foundation of Tongi Mudo. Uniting with the church leader there. So I was, I went to Poland. That was 2000, maybe six, seven. And I was teaching Tongi Mudo there. Kyokushinkai, Judo, Taekwondo, Shotokan Karate. Many people came. They're interesting about Tongi Mudo. They never heard about Tongi Mudo. So Dan Harbor, myself, and also um, Moldova instructors, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name. So three of us, we are teaching martial arts, Tongi Mudo there. Then I was teaching Tongi Mudo philosophy. When I start to teach, they are not interested. For example, Taekwondo, they don't teach philosophy. So they practice just the techniques so they can go to the tournament and they can get the medal. So that's their focus. So tai Taekwondo instructors, students, they don't want to listen to me. Mm. 
then I could have stopped, but somehow I didn't want to stop. So I spoke in English, and then one Polish brother translated from English to Polish. But these young people, high school students, especially Taekwondo, they understand English. So before they receive the translation, they understand immediately what I was talking about. When I look at these high school students, I felt they're like my children. Because my children already around that time, almost same age or older than them. But I feel some connection to them. And I really want to catch their heart, making a joke and looking at them, something approach them. And at the beginning, they are distant from me. They don't want to look at me, but afterward, they became closer to me and they listen more closer to me. And then they start to smile. They start to respond to me. And I was very inspired by them. So I, I spoke more. So this continued for three days. So after we finished the training lecture, they went back to their home. They stay overnight eating dinner. And next morning they came back. So this continued three days. Then we finished everything during closing ceremony. Many parents came with the children. Do you know why? For three days, the children changed. Their behavior to other parents changed. So parents want to know what's happened. So father and mother, they came with the children during closing ceremony. So many people there at that time. So I realized the power of Tongimodo philosophy. They are Catholic, they are Catholic. They are not Protestant or Unificationism. But they understand Tongimodo philosophy. And they change for three days. So I'm very grateful that we have a Tongimodo philosophy. Yeah. So this is my experience in Poland. And also my experience at the Oceania. I was teaching in Vanuatu, south of Solomon Island. Do you know Vanuatu? Yes, yeah, small island. Beautiful country. You can see the stars, so many stars. And fish come to you. Because you cannot fish. You cannot disturb the environment. They protect the environment so that many tourists can come. So fish should never be afraid of you. So I went down to the ocean and I tried to put the, some food. They came to you and they like this, bite you and wonderful experience. So Banuats, I start to teach Tongirimudo. We had a Tongirimudo demonstration during the workshop. 3,000, maybe 3,000 people came to watch. Because this facility is belong to Christian organization. So we, during that workshop, there was thanksgiving. So many Christian came. They want to watch our Tongimodo demonstration. So these students, they practice Tongimodo just for one week. Form of peace. They perform form of peace. These Christians crying with the tears. They perform. They just start from zero. But they really follow me, and so genuinely they practice. They really inspire the Christians. So during the closing ceremony, one with the boy, he was maybe 18, 19 years old. He used to hit his father and mother and his younger brothers and sisters. And during closing ceremony, he gave a testimony. And he really learned from Tongi Muda. So I want to change myself. That is like his pledge. I will change myself. I don't want to hit anymore my family because I learned Tongi Mudo. So I was very impressed by him. Another experience is this happened 2000, I think 10. 
all of a sudden I received a telephone call from Iran. We didn't have any Tongibudo Foundation in Iran. Muslim country. Very difficult to go there, even enter there. Even Unification Church, you, we cannot do that. We did there. But we received a telephone call. Master Majid Sarari, you know him, hmm? with his translator, called me. We are interested in Tongiru Mudo. We want to learn Tongiru Mudo. What? So I called Dr. Suk. What shall we do? Okay. So let's welcome them. But the, the Iranians, they said, we want to go to Korea. Because Tongiru Mudo starts from Korea, they south. So he, they saw Tongyu Dam have a good foundation in Korea. So shall we come to Korea, they said. Then I asked Dr. Sun, Iranians want to come to Korea. They want to learn Tongyu Mudo. And Dr. Sun said, don't bring them to Korea. You have to bring them to Philippines. Because we have more foundation. So I, I rented a nice you know, room in a hotel. So many people can come and then sit. We can have a, some meeting there. So maybe eight, how many people? Seven or eight Iranian. You remember? Yeah, seven or eight Iranian came with their wives. And we spent, I don't know how many days in the hotel. Keep asking many questions about Tongi Modo. Also going to Olympic game, and many questions. Some questions I cannot even answer. They are very serious. Then we invite them to IP, IPLC. IPLC, right? But that time IPLC already started? Yes. Yeah, IPLC. So they, show, they saw the demonstration. Wow, they are very inspired. You perform? Yes, you perform, right? They are so fascinated. And my salary, he took out his jacket and he jumped over more than 13 people, and he flipped in the air, he landed. Because he was so inspired by them, he won't also show himself. <laughs> so they became very interested in Tongyu Mudo. Also, Tongyu Mudo philosophy. They feel Tongyu Mudo philosophy is very close to Muslim teaching, Quran. So, Dr. Su was very happy. Then after they went back to Iran, they have to go to the martial arts um, organization in Iran to become the member. So it was so difficult, very difficult for Master Majid to, to, to go to meet these officers in Iranian government because they are very busy. Sometimes he has just waiting, waiting, fake, nothing happened. And they have to present some document and they're waiting for their response. And they went through a lot of difficulties. But finally, Iranian martial arts uh, committee accepted Tongi Mudo as a member. Yeah. Also, Tongi became a member of the Olympic Committee in Iran. So after they went back, Tongi Mudo was officially established in Iran. But they don't know exactly detail about Tongi Mudo techniques. So they asked me to come to Iran. That was 2000, 2011, February. Very cold, winter time. So, I was invited, so I want to go. Master Dan Harbour also, I invite him to go. I invite Master Venus Agustin, I want to invite him. But they couldn't come. Dan Harbour was afraid. Iranian America, very difficult, like an enemy. So if he went to Iran, he might be caught. He was afraid, so he couldn't come. And Dr. Bina Sanusin, I don't know why he was maybe busy. So just myself alone. 
and I was afraid of Iran because many media covered it. Huh? Iranians are a very dangerous country. So that I, oh no. But Dr. Su said, you should go. Yes, Dr. Su, I cannot refuse, right? So I went to Iran by myself. I arrived early morning. I slept for one and a half. Master Maji called me, Master Hoshiko, you have to get up. You have to come. Many of us still waiting for you. Okay. So I got up. I brought my uniform. I went to the doja. Hundred people. Strong guys are waiting with many different uniforms, but they have Tongi Mudo logo. Even uniform is different. Kyokushin and Taekwondo and many martial arts, but the logo is the same. Mm -hmm. They're waiting, ready to receive the training. <laughs> Very strong. Mm -hmm. So what shall I do? You by yourself. So first thing I did was perform demonstration. I have to show mm -hmm. what is Tongirimudo. So what I did by myself was performing linear movement, Eye of Tiger by myself. Then I perform circular motion, one co weaver. No stop, continuously. And they watch. Then I start to teach one set sparring with grappling techniques. I combine so they can become more interested. They are very, they are very good at grappling. So I have to include that. So they were listening and they practiced after I show. Then I saw so the Iranian parliament leader, I think he was there. And he was quoting from Quran. Hmm? Muhammad's message. And this quotation from the Quran was very interesting. You have to unite your mind and body. This particular message, yes. So I was very inspired. Then we went to the room, and I started to share Tongi Mudo philosophy lecture. They listened for the first time. They accepted. Then Tongi Mudo started in Iran. Now, how many students there in Iran? 3,000 Tongimudo students. Because Maji's salary was a former uh, Tansudo world champion. He also, he was a world champion, the pancreast. Do you know pancreast? Like a grappling tech, like a wrestling. He was a champion. So that's why he was very influential. Everyone know him in Iran. So once he said, Tongimodo, everybody follow. So 3,000 students already. So now Magistar is asking, please send to us Tongimodo instructor, men's instructor, women's instructor. Because they want to learn form. Finally, they decide to learn form. Before they are not interested in form at all. They want to practice sparring. But after they see our Tongi Mudo demonstration and form competition, they became interested in Tongi Mudo form. So we have to send quickly women and men instructor to teach the form in Iran. And they're very, very eager to go to Olympic Games. They're pushing me and Dr. Sil, let's go to Olympic. And they're a member of the Olympic Committee in Iran. So for the first time, Muslim country became our Tongi Mudo branch. So Tongi Mudo go beyond religious boundary. They know true father, Dr. Mu, Mrs. Mu. They know, they respect. Even they really interested in Tongi Mudo philosophy. So after I left, they have their own Tongi Mudo philosophy seminar. One of them giving a lecture. 
So doctors were very, very happy. So Iranian, Tongyum members, really respect true parents and Dr. Suk. And Dr. Suk himself went to Iran. He went there. So all the leaders Tongyum came from many huh, parts of Iran. And they listened to Dr. Suk. And Dr. Suk, I think, reported to parents about his experience in Iran. Now Tongimoto is spreading in Nepal, also Thailand, Cambodia, not only Philippines, right? And Taiwan. So Malaysia, yeah. So Nepal is Hinduism country, right? Hindu. Hindu, right? Yeah. So Master Leo Karumba. He went to Nepal, year 2005. No foundation at all, like, just like my 40 days pioneering. He has no place to go. Maybe some uh, church, maybe some facility there. But he has to start from zero. So how he does it? So maybe you heard from him. He went to some distant area with the humble, some vehicle. So when I went to Nepal, you have to go up and down, very narrow road and curving, very dangerous. So one time, Master Leo was in the bus. And the bus delayed from the road. So half of the bus was at the edge of the cliff. And then like this, he was inside the bus. If bus fell down, he was crushed, he died. So he was in the bus like this. So what he did was, they started throwing away the, all the luggage. So and then this became like this, so they can escape. Mm -hmm. Then one by they escape. He escaped. Is that true? Yes. It's a real story. I think God saved his life. That he continued to spread Tongirimudo in Nepal. He found some experienced martial artists, Taekwondo or Karate. They came and listened and learned from Master Leo. And he made amazing foundation. Many schools practice Tongirimudo. The government is supporting Tongirimudo. And Tongimodo Foundation is helping to restore Nepal. So I'm very grateful, Master Leo Karumba. Even though he didn't say, he's a very humble person, he made such a foundation. So we are very grateful for all those Tongimodo instructors who are sent by Dr. Suk and also other instructors. But Everything comes from Dr. Su. He's the one who sent. So even doctors ask me to go to Iran. He's the one who asked me. So I cannot re refuse. So that's the way Tongindo spread all over the world within 40 years. So Tongimodo, we made 70 country foundation. Now, 40 countries, Tongimodo is active now. But we have spread again 70 and more than 70. And even Dr. Suk said yesterday, we have to have a workshop in Tongimudo in all of Africa. How many countries in Africa? 54. 54. So Dr. Suk really wants Master Leo or myself to come to Africa and continue to teach and really resurrect Africa. So I'm very, very grateful that the Dr. Suk kept giving us the vision and really teaching about uh, Tongimudo philosophy and divine principle and conveying uh, Dr. Moon's message always to inspire us. So we read always 
Before the Tongi Mudo training, we have a meditation and we lead Dr. Moon's message, True Father's message. And when we finish, we also read message during meditation. So that's the way we, this can help us to develop our sound character. And Dr. Su encourages us to create a beautiful family. So he really, when you are blessed, hmm? for example, Maron, you are blessed. Dr. Su was very happy, right? Hmm? He concerned if Dong Yim instructor is alone, never be blessed. He really concerned. He want all the Tung Yim instructor to get blessed and to be married and to have children and create beautiful, happy family. So this is the uh, Tongi Mudo uh, goal and so we have to embrace everybody. So Dr. Sugu started Iruando. Do you know Iruando? Is the exercise which includes yoga exercise, breathing exercise, Qigong exercise and some aerobic exercise, many exercises combined, center upon Dr. Moon's message. So Dr. Suk said, we have to save all mankind. How many people living on the earth? Almost seven million. Yes. Seven billion people live on the earth. So Dr. Suk said, we have to save all of them. How? We need to help them to achieve three blessings. Right? To achieve these three blessings, you have to become healthy, not only physically, spiritually, and mentally also. So that's why Dr. Suk wants to spread Iruando so that everybody can practice. So Dr. Suk wants us to teach not only Tongi Mudo, but also Iruando to help everybody, older people, women, even some handicapped people, we have to teach and save mankind through Iruando and Tongi Mudo. So I'm very grateful because I'm very healthy through Tongi Mudo training. Still I can continue to teach. Even I'm getting older and older. So Dr. Suk helped me a lot in my life. Not only Tongi Mudo. Uh, for example, when I started family, before I start family, I have to go through a three day ceremony. But uh, I didn't have uh, any instructions that time in America. Uh, so I have to learn from my senior breast couples about three day ceremony. And I was afraid, you know, I have no experience, what shall I do? I asked Dr. Su, I will have a three-day ceremony, what shall I do? Then he said one word, which really gave me strength. So do you know what he said? Tongi Mudo spirit. Oh, that's the best message for me. And that's really helped. Then also I was a student in UTS. Before I start family, I have to study. So, my grade was very low that time. So uh, I was told by the uh, UTS uh, uh, staff that if you continue like this, you cannot graduate UTS. So I asked Dr. Sir, my grade is behind, what shall I do? He gave me three suggestions. Number one, you have to study before you go to the class. And then also, after you attend the class, you have to also check what did you learn. Okay? The secondary, you have to love teachers, professors. 
So I did it. I studied before the class and I studied after the class, went through all the notes. Then I was also pushing myself to sit at the front row at the class which I don't like. Because if you stay behind from the professors, you, do, you don't have a give and take. But if you stay closer to the professors, then you become more closer. And after the, like, uh, the class, you can raise questions personally to the professors and they can answer you. Through that, you become personal relationship with professors and you start to like them. So I did it. I intentionally pushed myself to sit at the front row. It's quite a challenge for me. Another such he gave to me was, you have to study. You have to focus and study. These two things, you have to focus. So what I did was, I woke up 4.30 in the morning, and we went to the dojo at 5 o'clock, and we did prayer and we do exercise. Then we went to the chapel to attend the service. So I continued this more than one year. Then what happened? My grade went up. I became top 10 students. My grade went up. So if you really want to get good mark in your study, you can practice these three things. So I want to encourage all the Tongimudo children, youth, to get good grade. They can really focus Tongimudo and they can focus their things. So I want all the Tongimudo children, youth, to become top students in the school. So that is my great expectation to youth. So we have to fulfill the three aspects, spiritual aspect, physical aspect, intellectual aspect. So we need to encourage our students not only practice Tongi Budo, but also to study academic, achieve higher degree of academy. So Dr. Bina Sagstein, he will demonstrate this Tongimo spirit. He got the PhD and now he's professor and he's also the president, Tongimo, uh, president of IPLC. So Dr. Suk really encouraged me to educate second generation in Japan. So when I started teaching the small children, I was not so much inspired. I just was focusing more to raise up the future Tongimo instructors quickly. But one mother came up to me and she said, Master Hoshiko, now you came back to hometown, so please teach Tongirumudo. She was begging me. Then I said yes. So three of her children became Tongimudo students. They used to practice soccer. They like soccer. But her, their mother asked me, please teach my children Tongirumudo. So they practiced Tongirumudo for seven years. And all of them get, got junior black belt. And also uh, other children, uh, since they are small, they practice Tongirumudo. And they really uh, became very good students in our church, but also they grade went up. One of the students became the president of student body of a junior high school after going through Tongirumudo training. 
and he became top students in the schools. So Tongi Mudo can really help us to achieve academic field and also spiritual life and also physical development. So many young people, oh, they really need the guidance, especially about love and sexual sexuality. It's very difficult for parents to teach this issue to their children. And school teachers also cannot teach this issue easily to their students. So what they are, the, the school is doing is just, just they, give free sex, uh, they give the sexual education, but they don't teach so much about the value and morality. So Tongi Mudo, we have a wonderful philosophy. And we can teach this philosophy to our students, especially the youth. Because they respect you as a Tongi Mudo instructor. And they can listen to you and they can follow you. That way we can help the parents and teachers. And we can raise many good Tongi Mudo instructors. So I really want to urge all the Tongi Mundo instructors to teach this Tongi Mundo philosophy to the youth who are lost and who are looking for some hero, for looking so for some example, for looking for the guidance. So I'm very grateful for 120 days workshop which is going on in Philippines. Many youths have changed so much. And that a, is a very good example. So now Nepal is also doing, Thailand also doing this. So all over the world, we need to really educate youth through Tongi Mudo training and teaching philosophy. So that is the direction from Dr. Suk and also direction from true parents through parents really concerned about education of the youth. So we want to work together with parents and teachers to raise these children to become the future leaders of the society, nation, and the world. So Tongi Mudo is the best tool to do this one. Many youth go to practice many martial arts physical training, but sometimes teachers cannot, they are not really qualified to teach this youth about what is the life, what is the life goals, what is the true love, what is the sexuality. They have no idea to teach. So we need to really utilize our Tongi Mudo philosophy and the training to change their life and give them the hope, give them the vision, give them the direction of their lives. So I met one lady in Kenya who came to the tournament yesterday. For some reason, she did not stay in Tonginumudo. She's now practicing karate, Shotokan karate. She's winning the medal. She just came back from South Africa. She attended the tournament, Shotokan Kora tournament. She won, I think, gold medal and trophy. And what she told me was, I learned Tongi Mudo, I love Tongi Mudo. But for some reason, she went to Shotokan Karate. But she said, I cannot forget Tongi Mudo philosophy. I went to Thailand. I learned Tongi Mudo lecture, Tongi philosophy lecture from Master Binas. I cannot forget this. And I really appreciate this Tongi Mudo philosophy. So now she's teaching small children now. And we really encourage her to 
please teach Tongyubu philosophy to your students. She said yes. So whoever practiced Tongyubu and Tongyubu philosophy, they cannot forget. So I'm hoping that she will come back to Tongyubu because she loves Tongyubu. She loves Tongyubu philosophy. I don't want to say fool, but uh, this is just an example. So uh, we are very fortunate that the Dr. Suk still uh, giving us the inspiration and in how to educate our youth through Tongyu Mudo. So let us practice this one. And uh, they are the one who will change the nation. So just like Nepal, the many young people practice Tongyu Mudo. They become the future leaders. And Nepal become the hmm, ideal nation. So Tongi uh, philosophy changed many lives, many lives. So that is my expectation of Tongi the uh, instructors. And also I'm very excited and inspired to teach many children Tongyu Budo. I'm the one who is inspired by the students. I teach, but they teach me. They give me strength, they give me energy, they keep me young. So I really appreciate the teaching Tongyu Budo to the children, younger people. Thank you.